Welcome to this YSL tutorial. In this video we're going to explain how to create and use VBA add-ins in Microsoft Excel. We'll begin the video with a quick explanation of what an add-in is and why you might want to create one in the first place. We'll then show you how you can begin a new project to start building your add-in and give you an example of a fairly simple function that you might want to consider including in the add-in itself. When we've written the function we'll talk about how you can save the file as an add-in and then how you can make that available to future Excel workbooks. The last parts of the video will explain how you can then protect your add-in code from other people making changes to it and also how you can make your add-in available to other VBA projects by setting a reference to it. So let's get started. One of the common reasons for wanting to create a VBA add-in in Excel is when you've written a set of custom functions in one workbook and you'd like to make those available outside of the workbook. So for example in this particular file I've written a function called long date format which formats my dates with a nice format. So if I choose from my IntelliSense list if I enter a formula into a cell equals long date format it appears in the IntelliSense. I can open some round brackets and point the function argument to a date. If I close the parentheses then and hit enter I'll get a lovely formatted date including a suffix after the um, number of the day of the month. So that's great in this particular workbook but if I wanted to use that function outside of the workbook I can't. If I create a brand new blank workbook by pressing Control and N and I attempt to use my long date function as you can say equals long date format you can see already that it doesn't appear in the IntelliSense list I can open some RAM brackets and I can attempt to pass a date into it I'll use the today function for convenience but when I enter that formula it gives me an error so it doesn't recognize the name of the function I'm trying to use so what we'll do to solve this problem is show you in this video how you can create a function add-in that you can then distribute and make available to all of your future workbooks To start creating our add-in, we'll need a blank workbook in which we can write our function code. So I'm going to press Ctrl and N in Excel to create a new blank workbook. Then I'm going to press Alt and F11 to launch the Visual Basic Editor. What I'm going to do first is rename the project that we're going to be writing our functions in. This is going to be quite important for a later step in the process. It's worthwhile making sure at this point that your project has a unique, sensible, descriptive name. So I'm going to call mine Wise Owl Functions. Project names follow the same naming conventions as for modules, so you can't use spaces and most punctuation characters are disallowed, so stick to just text and numbers. What we can then do is insert a module into the project, so I can do that in a normal way, right click on the project and choose insert module, and I'm going to rename my module as date functions. We can then go about starting to write our functions in the module we've created. Now as we've already produced a video on how to create functions in this series, I don't want to spend too much time doing that here. So for the sake of demonstration, we're just going to stick to one single function, and it's the example that I showed you earlier on at the start of the video. Just bear in mind that in the real world, your function adding can contain as many different modules and as many different functions as you like, and you can always come back and add more functions and modules to your add-in later on. So to, to demonstrate this in this video, we're going to create a function called long date format and we're going to define a single parameter for this function which is going to be a date parameter so I'm going to say date to format if I can spell format eventually there we go and that's going to be a date data type and then after the parentheses I'm going to say that this function will return a string hit enter a couple of times and then indent one space so a couple of things we need to do in this particular function we're going to concatenate several different parts to build our date format and one of the parts of the date format will be the suffix added to the end of the day number so the number of the day of the month so the first second third etc so I'm going to use a variable in which I'm going to store that value so I'm going to say dim suffix as string and then to calculate the suffix I'm going to use a case statement so I'm going to say select case and then I'm going to use a function called day which will give me the number of the day of the month. And I'm going to say day of date to format. And then I'm going to end my select before I start filling in the details, otherwise I'll forget later on. And essentially what I'm going to do here is test several different possibilities. If the case is 1 or 21 or 31, then I know that the result of my suffix um, variable, or the value stored in my suffix variable, should be equal to st. If the, 
day of the month is 2 or 22, then I know that the suffix should be equal to nd. And then if the case is 3 or 23, then I know that the suffix should be rd. For anything else, I know that the suffix has to be th. So I can use a case else statement there and say suffix equals th. So that will generate the correct suffix. What I'm going to do now is put that into a long date format. And I'm going to return the result to the long date format function as well. So I'm going to say long date format equals. Then I'm just going to use a space underscore so I can continue writing this line across multiple lines of code. And I'm going to use a format function that's already built into VBA. The thing that I'm going to format will be my date to format parameter, or whichever value has been passed into that parameter. And the first part of my date format will be 4Ds, which will give me the name of the day of the week, Monday, Tuesday, etc. And then another single D, which will give me the number of the day of the month. I can close the double quotes there, close the round brackets, and then concatenate to that. I'm going to use another space underscore to continue on the next line. I can concatenate to that my suffix. I'm going to use another ampersand and then another space underscore and the very final part of the date format will be to add on the name of the month and the year. So I'm going to use the format function again and I'm going to format date to format but this time I'm going to use a slightly different formatting code. I'm going to put a space in to make sure that I get a space after my suffix and then four m's give me the name of the date, name of the month and then finally another space and four y's which will give me the four digit year. I can close the double quotes at that point and close around brackets and that is the function created. Before we actually turn this into an add-in, one quick thing that's worthwhile doing is testing your function to make sure that it works. So I'm going to do that using the handy immediate window. If I head to the view menu, I can choose immediate window or I could have just press Control and G as well. And in the immediate window I can type in a question mark followed by any function that belongs to VBA. So because I've defined my long date format function, this appears in my IntelliSense list as well. So if I type in a, a, a question mark followed by control and space on the keyboard, I can look for my long date format function in the IntelliSense list. It will tell me that I have to pass in a date. So I'm going to use the VBA function date, which will return today's date. And if I hit enter at the end of the line, just to reassure myself that it does return a correctly formatted date. So that'll look sensible. Let's close the immediate window. The next step is to turn this simple function in a module in a standard workbook into an add-in. To save the file as an add-in, we can either click the Save button in the Visual Basic Editor, or we can return to Excel and head to the File menu and choose Save As. Alternatively, we can return to Excel and just press the F12 key on the keyboard, and that'll display the Save As dialog box. Now it doesn't really matter about the location just for the moment, the most important thing that you must do is change the save as type option. We're not trying to save an Excel workbook, what we're trying to do is save an Excel add-in, which has the extension XLAM in newer versions of Excel. You can still save in the legacy format as well, if you're still working in Office 2003, then you can save an XLA add-in, but we're going to save ours as an XLAM add-in. So once we select that file type, we'll be directed to a different location will automatically be redirected to the add-ins folder which is part of your roaming user profile. Now this is actually the best place to store your add-ins, it's the default location that Excel will look for add-ins when you're trying to load them. But you don't have to save it here, you can if you prefer, save your file on a desktop or in a shared location, it genuinely doesn't matter where you save your add-in. So just to demonstrate that I'm going to save my add-in on my desktop. I am going to give my add-in a sensible name. I'm going to call it um, Wise Owl Add-in. It's not inventive, but it's sensible. And if I then click the Save button, my add-in will be saved. Now, one thing you might notice about this is that the workbook itself hasn't had its name changed. It still retains the original default generic Book Six name. It's the actual when you save an add-in, it doesn't save the workbook itself. It saves all the code we've written in the VBA project. So we can actually discard this workbook now altogether because we genuinely don't need it. I'm going to head to the file menu and choose to close it down. And if I'm asked to save any changes, I'm not going to bother. No, I'm not asked to anyway. The next step now is how you make your add-in available to any other workbook. In order to tell Excel that we want to use our add-in in future workbooks, we need to manage the add-ins that Excel currently loads. So to do that, we can head to the file menu 
choose Options, head to the Add-ins tab on the left hand side. Choose to manage Excel add-ins from the drop down list at the bottom and then click the Go button to display a list of, av of available add-ins. Now there is a slightly shorter way to get to this dialog box as well, if I just cancel out of it just for now. If I head to the Developer tab, there's an Add-ins button on here, but at the moment it's inactive because I don't have any workbooks open. If I just create a brand new blank workbook by pressing Ctrl and N, I can click the Add-ins button here and that will open up this dialog box immediately so it saves going through all those menus. Now had we saved our add-in in the default add-ins location as we were prompted to when I save my add-in, we could see this in the list already. But I saved my add-in on my desktop, so I'm going to need to browse for mine. So if I hit the Browse button, I can browse to my desktop, I can choose my Wise Owl add-in file, and then I can click OK. That then gets added to the list and will be loaded every single time you open up Excel, so it will now be available to every new project that you create when I click OK. So just to demonstrate that, I'm going to enter a date into a cell in this brand new blank workbook. If I press Control and the semicolon, that's a short way to enter today's date. Then if I type in equals long date format, we'll see in this version of Excel, in Excel 2013, it appears in the IntelliSense list. And then I can open up the round brackets, select the cell containing my date, close the round brackets and hit enter, and I find that my function works in a new workbook. Just to prove that it's not just this particular workbook, although I set the add-in to be loaded in this workbook, if I create another completely brand new blank one again, Control and N, I've now got book 8, and if I enter another date in a cell in here, I can press Control and semicolon, and it can go to another cell and say equals long date format, select that cell, close the round brackets, and hit enter there. So the add-in is now available to every workbook you create. If I decide that I need to make changes to the way my add-in works, that's not a problem either. If I'm already working in a workbook in, in Excel, then my add-in is currently loaded and I'll be able to see it using the Visual Basic Editor. So if I head to the Developer tab and hit the Visual Basic button, I'll see that as well as the two projects I've just created for the new workbooks, I've also got my WiseAL functions add-in loaded. I can't see a separate workbook for this open in, uh, in Windows, but the add-in itself is loaded in the background so the code is, is always available. So I can make any changes that I want to my code, I could add a new function, I could add a new module with extra functions in there, and then once I've made those changes, as long as I've got something selected in this project, I can head to the save button up here and choose to save the add-in. So that will save any changes that I've made. If you decide that you want to distribute your add-in to other users, you might want to consider protecting your add-in so that those users can't make changes to, the, to your code or even to see your code. And you can make those changes from the Visual Basic Editor. If you right-click on your WiseAL Functions project, or whatever you've called your VBA project, you can choose to view the properties of that project. On the dialog box that appears, there's a Protection tab, and you can choose to lock the project for viewing and then assign a password. I'm going to put in a nice, simple, easy one and then click OK. We'll then need to make sure that we've saved the file, so if we click anywhere in the add-in in the project and then click the Save button in the Visual Basic Editor, and then we can simply restart our add-in to make those changes take effect. The simplest way by far to do that is to close down the VB Editor and then close down Excel altogether. If I then just quickly reopen Excel from the Start menu, and I'll just begin another brand new blank workbook, I'll see that my add-in is still available. If I say equals long date format, that's still there and it will still work. Oops, a few too many, a few too many brackets, never mind. There it is. And then if I look into the Visual Basic Editor from the Developer tab, I should find that my add-in is available here, but the project has been collapsed. And if I try to expand the project, I'm asked for the password. So other users wouldn't be able to see your add-in, but you can enter your password if you need to make any extra changes to it. So we've seen how easy it is to make our add-in available to other workbooks. What if we want to use the functions in our add-in in other VBA projects? Now that's a little bit more tricky. I've got a new project open here with a new workbook and I can insert a module into that project in the standard way. I'm not going to bother changing its name and I'm going to write a quick simple subroutine in here called test. 
which I know isn't a very inventive name, but please forgive me for that. All I'm trying to do here is I want to display a message box which displays a nicely formatted version of today's date. And I'd like to use my long date format function to do so. If I press Control and Space to display my IntelliSense list, sadly I'm not going to find access to my long date format function. I can open some round brackets and I can attempt to pass in the date function, but as soon as I try to run this subroutine, I'll find that the VP editor doesn't recognize the name of the function I'm trying to use. The simple reason for that is that currently this VBA project has no concept that our add-in project even exists. So to do that, to make this aware that the add-in function exists or the add-in project exists, what we're going to do is set a reference to that project. We can do this using the tools menu and the references option in there. And this is the reason you wanted to give your original add-in project a sensible name right at the start of this section. So if we have a look at why our functions is the name of our VBA project, we should find there's a corresponding item here to our add-in. So if I check that box, we're setting a reference to our add-in file in its original save location. If I then click OK and then attempt to run my subroutine again, we'll find this time the subroutine will work. So it's not too much more complicated. It's just that additional step to make your add-ins available to other VBA projects. You must choose tools, references, and set a reference to your add-in project. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wiseowl.co.uk.